Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Hey, hasn't it been good to get rain this week? I don't know about you, with all the other craziness going on, I try to just kind of go to the simplest denominator and be grateful. And I am grateful for rain. We went weeks and weeks and weeks, years, months, something. (laughs) And it seemed like it would never happen. And now we're getting several days of it, so it's good. Hey, um, I want to talk about a, a article that came out this week. I want to share with you because I've been getting all kinds of calls and inquiries on it. And a lot of things are happening right now in the world of human trafficking. And I really want to kind of set the record straight. And that is some of the purpose of this. Um, Part of it is, as many of you know, a million kids was taken off the air by Facebook a while back. And it's been very, very difficult. We would really, really encourage you to please go to IE Million Kids on Facebook and like us. We would appreciate that a lot because we lost thousands and thousands of followers. But we did see an article this week that that, uh, literally uh, hundreds of thousands of people have been removed. They blamed it on QAnon. And I want to kind of set the record straight about what's real in trafficking, because we're about to go into some articles that have been coming out that are that are pretty darn exciting. And yet they're very confusing. And this particular one is called uh, Operation Lost Angels, where uh, the FBI went in and recovered 33 missing children in the Los Angeles field office area. And uh, some of the comments on that seem like that's really, really exciting until they read the article. And then there's a lot of information on there that you say, well, how can that be true? Well, so I want to start first with the QAnon story. Who are they? I'm not really sure. They are very right wing radicals in my opinion. Now, people ask me, do I support their work? Do I support their theory? Uh, And like that, they go to a lot of really, really fine churches. And uh, they they have a lot of just very disturbing uh, statistics and information and like that. And uh, they they really get off on a lot of the conspiracy theories like Wayfair and uh, the uh, Pizzagate and like that. One of the things uh, people ask me, do I subscribe to that? No, I really don't. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I, I report to the Riverside County Sheriff Department. And uh, I also report to the Department of Justice. I have to work with rule of law and evidence. I can't, uh, we can't go out and arrest people on theory and speculation. We need real facts. And while that certainly makes it a lot more difficult for us to raise money, it's not nearly as sexy as some of the stuff a lot of people come up with, it is the truth. And I think that it's important to look at the cold, hard facts of child sex trafficking and the the real reality of minors who are being violated. And so in the course of that, I want to kind of go into, first of all, what this particular article that came out said that that Facebook uh, felt that QAnon was a dangerous organization and they were going to eliminate any of the accounts that might be related to them. Well, there's certainly nothing on my site before they took it down that was related to them. I never, ever quoted them. I never followed them. I did talk about child sex trafficking. I did talk about the reality of it. So to be lumped together just arbitrarily because we're trying to fight this crime is a bit insulting, quite frankly. You know, it's it would be like... Uh, you know, uh, some of the Democrats being taken off because uh, they they supported Black Lives Matter. But that didn't happen in that case. The other thing that's really infuriating, as I talked about Pornhub last week, is that one of the things that we've seen with Twitter is they still have a lot of child pornography on their own site while they're taking down 
anybody who might be related to fighting sex trafficking because in their mind we're related to QAnon. We are not, absolutely not. Um, you know, no different than just because I'm a nonprofit doesn't make me align with the Red Cross or World Vision or any of the other groups that are out there. Just because somebody is out there that you don't necessarily agree with and feel that they should be taken down, just because somebody else is in the same business does not mean that they should be taken down. We are all about doing good, okay? We sat with parents who are missing their kids. We we help kids. We send out tens of thousands of flyers for missing and runaway kids. And we're only able to do that because of the generosity of people like Sam Manuel Casino and BMW of Riverside and Doris Anderson over there at Remax and Colleen Horgan that sponsors those programs. And, you know, we don't have the money to do that ourselves. People come forward and assist us. And they do that because there is nobody in more danger ever than a missing and runaway child. So I want to set the record straight. First of all, we were taken off. Okay. Nobody will give us a reason why we are currently trying to rebuild and we've taken all of our education processes in house. In fact, if you want to be on our immediate release program, the insider alert program, where you can get the latest articles, the latest information, just go to millionkids.org and give us your name there under the million kids insider alerts. And that'll sign you up for things like missing and runaway children or new technology or events that are happening, such as this kind of thing where they're recovering a lot of children. We are all about solving this problem. We uh, certainly we do fundraising just like QAnon. Uh, they're a lot better at it than us because they make these uh, extraordinary claims. We do not. What we do is we announce regular cases and local cases when we can. And so we are all about doing the real deal. And uh, we're not interested in making it melodramatic. We're interested in preparing parents and grandparents and teachers and law enforcement and social workers and everyone we can on how all of this business is changing and what we can do about it. So with that, I want to get started on this article, and we're going to go deep into it over the next uh, three segments here. We're going to be talking about an FBI operation that rescued kids here in Los Angeles, and then one that did it in Florida and Georgia, and one that did it in Ohio. The reason I want to do this is I want to paint a picture for you on all sides of the aisle, regardless of what you're looking at, is why these programs have to happen. and the goodness in this program, but also some of the challenges in here. In this particular article, which was released this week in many newspapers across the United States and social media sites, it said there were 33 missing children that were recovered this month in anti-human trafficking operations out of the FBI's field office. So 33 kids who were reported missing have been found. That just seems like an extraordinary headline to me. First of all, I am very proud of the FBI for putting money towards it. And uh, like it or not, this money came from a previous administration because these are the kinds of operations that weren't run prior you know, there are thousands of missing and runaway children across the United States, but you know it is very seldom that you have an administration that was willing to fund putting one of these together. These operations to track down these kids cost a lot of money. And they take a lot of time and a lot of man hours. And so I am grateful that this has happened um, and happened on January 11th and that it was properly funded. It says of the 33 children recovered, Operations Los Angeles, Los, Lost Angels, eight were being sexually exploited at the time of their recovery. So that is what, uh, 33%, I think, nearly. OK, and uh, that's important to understand. One of the things we're going to talk about this segment is what happens to these kids and why are so many missing and why are so many in the foster care system? 
that are are foster kids. Literally 60% of kids who are victims of sex trafficking come from foster care. And one out of six kids who run away will be a victim of sex trafficking in the first 48 hours. Now, if those two statistics don't give you cold chills, I don't know what else I can offer you. You got a cold, gold art there. This is a serious matter, and I've grappled with it ever since I've been combating human trafficking. So my name is Opal Singleton. The organization is Million Kids, and we are coming up against a break, so we're going to be right back. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Hey, there are many good restaurants in the Inland Empire, but really great restaurants are hard to find. Let me tell you about the Toasted Barrel in Corona. It's a trendy, upscale steakhouse with great pasta and seafood. It's a fantastic choice for birthdays and anniversaries or just that special night out with your loved one and friends. Inland Empire Magazine has awarded them Best Restaurant and Brunch for the past three years. The owners, Ed and Shirley, are friendly and attentive to your needs. If you're a prime rib connoisseur, this place is for you. Go ahead and try it out. The Toasted Barrel, located at 1300 El Sobrante Road in Corona. Or Google them at Toasted Barrel to make reservations. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. Be sure and tell Ed and Shirley that Opal sent you. It will be a night you'll never forget. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton. Our show is brought to you by an organization here locally in the Inland Empire called Million Kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Million Kids is named that because more than a million kids are trafficked each year throughout the world. Those are the ones that we know about and that we can count. And so for the last 12 years here, in the Inland Empire, and for the last 10 especially, I have been the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. That means I deal with the real deal, and I've seen a lot in my day. And uh, there are days as this, I start to look where this is headed and what's going to be done about it. And there are days you wonder, can we keep this up? Can we make a difference? Can we fix it somehow? You know, the laws are changing and not in our favor. Uh, the, the processes are changing. The funding on many law enforcement agencies changing. And it's going to make combating this crime so much more difficult and, quite frankly, 
it makes it so much more important. And only the strong are going to survive in this deal, I guarantee you, because many things are happening that change all of this. You've heard me talk about Proposition 57 and then Proposition 20. Well, Proposition 20 did not pass. So child sex crimes are not considered uh, violent crimes in the state of California. That all uh, was determined by Proposition 57 back with Governor Brown and our, uh, at the time, Attorney General uh, Kamala Harris. And, um, you know, so literally it is much more difficult now because it's not considered a violent crime. Then a while back, they put in a law that said condoms can't be used for uh, probable cause. And so that makes getting those uh, search warrants a lot more difficult. And then a couple of years ago, they put in a new law to protect victims. It was meant to be a good law but to protect victims of child sex trafficking, anyone under the age of 18. But as part of that law, that meant it made it much more difficult for law enforcement to require the cooperation of a child if they're being violated. You know, it really makes it difficult. And then recently, you know, we got SB 245. And in that law, it said that that uh, the age of consent is uh, 14 now in in the situation with uh, child sex offenders. And if they're perpetrators within 10 years, and, you know, we see cases of this, which we'll talk about in this article, where she's 14, 15 years old, she's got a black eye, she's been burned and cut and bit and really beat up. And you're looking at the guy next to her and you know darn good, well, that's a pimp. And she's going, oh, no, no, I tripped and fell and he's my boyfriend. And, you know, that that there's not a whole lot you can do with these kinds of laws. And now that Proposition 20 didn't pass, we're starting to find out that also buried in that proposition, you know, this it's one of these things you got to pass it to find out what's in it. I, I hate to see legislation like that, but we're apparently going down a road where you're about to see a lifetime supply of it because the people that have done it in the past are the people that are now doing it again. And the problem with that is that it also included that enhanced sentencing law. You know, it, we, we do this thing where, you know, a pimp is a gang member and he's selling a 15 year old girl and beating her up and trading her throughout the gang. And we finally get all the evidence. We arrest him, we get to court and they normally would give him an enhanced sentencing of, of an additional 10 years for a gang uh, a relationship or the fact that he had already been maybe picked up for a child sex crime. Those enhanced sentencings are going to go away. You know, uh, the Los Angeles district attorney right now is being sued by 800 um, prosecutors out of L.A. saying because he's saying you cannot consider enhanced uh, sentencing in your future sentencing. Well, now that Proposition 20 didn't pass, theoretically, I'm not going to say it will happen, but it is a possibility that up to 22,000 sex offenders could get out early in California and one thing about it is they can't they won't consider the enhanced sentencing because the way that bill was given to us and and it, all of our leaders you know our governor our attorney general stood there and said oh no 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 won't include sex offenders but they knew they had not written it in the law that it would not include sex offenders and so you know we had the wool pulled over our eyes and guess what it is going to include sex offenders because a sex offender sued the state of California prior to Proposition 20, and a, a Supreme Court justice in California up there in the Northern Bay Area said, absolutely, sex offenders are being discriminated against, and if the voter had wanted it to include sex offenders, they would have said so. And so there you go. You know, they'll be looking and say they got a 15 year sentence and they've served half and they're now considered for early parole and you can't consider the gang enhancement. And, you know, welcome to my neighborhood. What about all the people who who testified against them? What about those people that to put their life on the line, believing that law enforcement and the courts and the rule of law and and our society, our law abiding society would protect them. And now there will not be that protection. So I want to go back to my article of the 33 children recovered Operation Lost Angels. Eight were being sexually exploited at the time of their recovery. 
Two children were recovered multiple times during the operation. The FBI said, noting that it's not uncommon for rescued victims to return to commercial sex trafficking, either voluntarily force fraud or coercion or by force fraud or coercion. What on earth did that article just say? So let me just kind of take it apart for you, okay? What happens here is the way these kids become victims, if they're in the system, uh, meaning the foster care system, first of all, I get it. The only difference between you and me and a foster kid is that we had somebody who thought we were the greatest thing since sliced bread. And they were willing to stand behind us, even though our behavior did not deserve it. OK, they we knew that we had a core relationship that would not abandon us. By the way, that is one of the reasons why when a kid comes out of the closet and says that they have some sexual difference or some sexual um, something they want to try that is different than the norm, regardless of whether you agree with them or not, please do not throw that child out on the street. Los Angeles is the top. Uh, city in the nation for kids clawing their way through the dives of society, if you will, to try to survive because they came out of the closet or they said something the parent didn't agree with and that parent threw them out. They're like a hunted animal and their lies will be beyond description. So even if you don't agree, for Pete's sake, get counseling for the whole family and find some civil way to work through it. Do not throw the child out on the street. We have these foster kids that, you know, many of them are very smart kids, and they have great hearts, and they want to do well, but they don't have anybody that believes in them. And it is my observation that as they go through puberty, our state decides they need a cell phone and they look around and they decide somebody somewhere in the United States is going to think they're wonderful. They're going to think they're hot. They're going to like them. And they start to use the cell phone to connect with outsiders. They go on dating sites, these hookup apps that are out there. The, the worst one I've seen lately is tagged with the pets program. Oh my gosh, I've seen that. It's half pimps. I'm telling you, that's what it looks like to me. And uh, we just did a thing on Pornhub where many of our kids, they had to take down almost 10 million amateur pornography uh, videos because many of our kids made amateur pornography in the hopes of making money. And they sent them in and Pornhub aired them and amateur pornography became their largest category. And when they started going through them, what they found was it was full of our teenagers who make sexy photos and think they're going to pick up a little extra money. Well, if you're a foster kid, that's, that's a no brainer. Okay. You've already been beat up and abused, and many of those kids have already been sexually violated. So not why not? You're feeding your oats, and you make a little extra money, and nobody knows about it, and somebody is going to discover you. And that is often how it happens. Many of these kids, when there was a famous study in sex trafficking called the High Risk Victims of Trafficking Model. And what they learned is that about 60 to 70 percent of runaways in the city of Dallas were trafficking victims or were being trafficked or traded or being sold by a pimp out there. And they were living on the streets trying to survive by selling their bodies. And this is often how it happens. And it is the hardcore brunt in truth. My name is Opal Singleton, and we are up against that break. So be with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16, I'll sign it, and I'll ship it to you personally. 
We hope that you will order this book, Educate Yourself About How to Keep Our Kids Safe in This Day of Changing Technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton. I am the president and CEO of Million Kids, and we serve as the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. But hey, I want to give a shout out for the San Bernardino Task Force, too. They're great, great people over there. They're doing a wonderful job. They are not federally funded as we are, but they are doing a dynamite job. And I also want to give a shout out to LAPD because I know there are a lot of people. I do training of LAPD over, I'm an instructor at USC, and uh, I can tell you that there are many LAPD officers that care deeply about this, but they slashed the budget in LA over almost almost $150 million, and that makes it very, very difficult for LAPD to be able to do these complex cases or run these proactive kind of programs. You see, the reason why this was able to be ran is it was funded federally through the president to the uh, to the FBI to go out and find these missing kids. I know that human trafficking was a real passion of Melania Trump and, and also um, President Trump, and they put their money where their mouth is, and they were able to do these kinds of program. So, you know, it makes up for the fact that a lot of local PDs have cut their budget. Now, I also want to give a shout out to the Riverside County Board of Supervisors for supporting Chad Bianco, our sheriff, and he has doubled the size of our task force because he knows that our kids are the most important uh, situation in our society. Once a child goes out on the streets, their lives will change forever. And unfortunately, 60% of kids in sex trafficking come from the foster care system. What happens? They go online, they meet somebody on a dating site, they meet somebody at a mall, they get the same fantasy relationship everybody else gets, and poof, they're gone. They have so little to lose. They're convinced that these guys are going to give them a better life or fill that hole in their heart. But I also want to share with you that it is my experience since we run Million Kids Missing Kids that many of your runaways today are young people who have two-parent households. They are raised with plenty of money. Some of them go to private schools. And they get on those websites and these dating sites, or they hook up on a tattoo site. They get on Whisper. They get on Meet Me. The number one on it is Tinder. Uh, and that Tinder is the dating site. And they hook up. And they have the greatest of dreams, which quickly become the greatest of nightmares. And so it is important that we understand what's going on. So out of 33 uh, kids picked up in L.A., eight of them were already being sexually abused at the time. What they mean is they are engaged in sex trafficking. They're probably being sold on a website. By the way, those websites that are out there that are advertising uh, sex for sale, you need to know that uh, it isn't just that girl advertising. You know, many of them are reverse stinks uh, that are being uh, put on by law enforcement everywhere. You will see quite a few of them in the near future. This is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And so a lot of efforts going to be going on this month at being able to stop that. You know, all the time we're trying to do this, there's a whole movement to legalize prostitution. But think about the number of our kids that are out there. OK, you can go on to pornography and theoretically only adults were sending in pornography. But it turns out two thirds of Pornhub's uh, pornography were young people that were not old enough to make a pornographic video, let alone collect money for it. So two children were recovered multiple times during the operation. Why is that? OK, they went out, they rescued them, they brought them in, they put them uh, back in the system, they got them counseling, they, uh, you know, did what they could to fill in the blanks, but they would go back out there again. Well, you have to understand sex trafficking to understand this phenomena. It is tragic, you know, uh, 
I don't disagree with that. It is absolutely traffic, tra- tragic. And I, I will tell you that there is a whole group of men and women that sometimes just bang their head against the wall because they go out in the middle of the night, leaving their own children, their own family, their own wife or husband, and go out and rescue that child in the hopes that this time we can get through to them. But that pimp, once they get them groomed, they really take control of their lives. You know, the first thing they will tell them is they will kill anybody in their family, or they will put their little brothers and sisters out in trafficking. If you ever hear that, you need to believe that. Okay. Uh, that, that's a, a great threat that you will hear. You might see these kids and re- not recognize that they're victims of trafficking. They could be very sleep deprived because they work these kids 20 hours a day. You know, um, one of the, um, one of the YouTubes I would encourage you to see is something called Bianca and sex trafficking victim, B I A N C A B I A N C A on YouTube. It is a very sad thing to see, but it teaches you how, you know, she falls in love it. She chases him down. She becomes his uh, girlfriend, which very quickly turned into becoming the, uh, the, uh, into commercial sex. And then it very quickly deteriorated into extreme violation in commercial sex. And she felt like she couldn't get out. She would, he would tell her, you know, once you're in, you feel like you cannot get out. Those photos are out there. They're being put on websites. Uh, You know, there, a lot of things are happening. They get burned, they get cut, they hold back food. You have to make so much money before you're allowed to sleep. You know, it's a, it is a very serious kind of thing. And most of your sex buyers don't want to look at it. And and they don't want to realize what is really happening. But this is not uncommon that out of 33 of them, at least one third of them were being exploited, meaning they were being put out in the sex trade. And literally two of them were picked up over and over because they continued to go by, go back. Uh, The article goes on to say this harmful cycle highlights the challenges victims face and those faced by both law enforcement when attempting to keep the victims from returning to an abusive situation. Victims may not even realize they are being trafficked. Now, one of the things that I will tell you that Riverside County is, I think, a model task force. I'm very, very proud to work with them. I've until COVID, I traveled across the United States training other tasks forces on how to put this together. But one of the organizations that plays a very key role is our social services department. Now they're not perfect. They've got thousands and thousands of kids who should be at home with a parent, but the parents for some reason or other was not able to parent them. Now that is not an easy process for a government, but I will tell you that they're all trained in sex trafficking and child sex trafficking. So is your Riverside County probation department. And when there's an operation that involves a foster child and they're on probation, they go with them. Most of your judges have been trained to their credit. They've taken the time out to understand this crime down at Southwest justice center. We actually have a girl's court so that they can be treated differently and be treated as the victims that they are that even if they do not recognize that they're a victim, Uh, Some of the victims located during the operation were sexually exploited in the past and were considered vulnerable and missing children. So I want to address a minute why so many of these that are runaway missing in the foster care system. The reason for it is there's a law that requires that if you're in the foster care system and you run away, that it is mandatory that you be reported to the missing kid hotline, 1-888-3737-888. And uh, it's mandatory. So therefore, 60 to 70 percent of the missing kid um, programs that go on with NECMEC, National Center for Missing Exploited Children, are foster kids. That's because when your child runs away or your grandchild runs away, you file a report with the police department, but they might come back in two or three days and you don't file that with the NECMEC organization. And so it is true that a high number of these are foster kids. But it's because the law requires them to report that. 
Some of the rescued miners were arrested for probation violations, meaning they had been shoplifting or stealing cars or stealing mail, robbery or other misdemeanors, while one child a victim of a custodial parent kidnapping, one was. So one of the things that you'll see is many of these kids have a record, and what they try to do is give them an education while they're in juvenile hall. I saw the curriculum being developed and gave some input on what they were doing to train them while they have them in counseling and all of our counselors we try to train. And so the whole idea there is for people to understand child sex trafficking. And so these kids can get rescued out of the system and actually grow up to be law law abiding citizens. And it is more and more difficult with the way the laws are going. This is Opal Singleton. It's break time. We'll be right back. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens and she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of Million Kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951-781-9345. That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton. We're talking about these big uh, operations that are taking place in Los Angeles. They rescued 33 missing. In uh, Florida and Georgia, they rescued rescued, uh, 40 uh, kids that were missing. In Ohio, they rescued 45 missing kids uh, with 179 arrested in an Ohio human trafficking sting. So what are we talking about? We're talking about going out and finding kids who run away regularly and have been missing for some time to see if we can't be able to get a hold of them, get them in a safe place, get them some services, protect them, educate them, and do what we can to help them get back on their lives. And also go after the trafficker because most of these kids are lured in and groomed by gang members, by traffickers of all kinds. And once they're in there, they just feel like there's no way out. So our officers and our government funded uh, all that it took to go out 
out and do this. They're also funding what I call reverse stinks. If you remember Chris Hansen and To Catch a Predator, um, you know, those are very real things. Prostitution is against the law in the state of California. And especially if you're into putting a child, a minor out for commercial sex, that is really against the law. And while it used to get you a lot more time than it might in, under this group of leaders, um, one of the things that you will find is that, that this is taken very seriously. And so if you're thinking of doing sex buying, I hope you'll think again. Uh, you like to tell yourself these people are there voluntarily and they, they are making money and they're doing what they want and they think they're hot. And, and you may even think they care about you. But what you need to know is a major portion of these people got into it without meaning to get into it meaning that at one point they were raped or drugged, they took photos, they sell them out on the sex sites, and then they convince them that there's nothing else that they can do about it, and they might as well go and do this, and especially if you're a foster child. Now, Me and Kids is an organization that literally, literally fights this day and night, and uh, lately it's a little bit like crawling up a mountain on your knees, quite frankly. The nothing is in our favor. You know, with COVID, it's harder than hell to raise money. It really, really is. You know, we, I'm, I've never been really good at asking people for money. I'm, I'm much better at earning the money, you know, have me come out and speak and uh, pay me some money and I can earn it and I'll sell my books. And by the way, I do have two books that I think are excellent. I'm prejudiced because I wrote them, but they have been involved in saving many people's lives. The first one is seduce the grooming of America's teenagers. It's all about that grooming process. How is she, especially she, but it can be a he when it comes to sending naked photos. But oftentimes she goes on one of those dating sites. She looks on one of those, um, those, um, uh, maybe tattoo sites and she thinks some guy is hot and she starts to hook up with them. And, uh, the problem is we don't explain to our kids what the difference between an empowering relationship and an exploitive relationship is. What should you be looking for? And by the way, what does that look like on the internet, on the World Wide web? We put our kids on the World Wide web and we pretend everybody on there is some sort of saint. Well, we know better. Okay. Even some of the saints are fallen saints, as we're finding out in some of those lawsuits for sexual assault. And so we cannot naively believe and put our kid on there without understanding that at least half of the people on there are going to be people you'd never invite in your living room. And that is the purpose of the documentary that we have coming out. Uh, we're working on it. We had hoped it would be out next month. It's not going to make it because of COVID and the, the uh, filming rules under COVID have been greatly restricted what can be done. But we're getting there. Uh, we've already, I've already been in some of the filming. And uh, so it's coming out and it will be for you, mom and dad, and also for our kids. I want, I want every kid in America to see where do naked photos go when you hit send? You know, who are the people who are looking for your naked photo? And how can you tell if this is going to be in a relationship that's good for you or bad for you? And we make that even harder when we do things like become a porn model and make 40000 a week. That's exactly what Pornhub was offering when it received almost 10 million videos, many of them from underage people. And by the way, they're not all off yet. I happened to Google and I got a pop-up with child pornography on it. And uh, it wasn't even a, a pornographic, well, it was a, you know, Pornhub site, but it was just webcam sex just to see what they're, and I put in the word data and it gave me a pop-up. And uh, these, these, by the way, are the same people, you know, like Twitter and Facebook. I mean, Twitter has child pornography on it and they won't take it down. There's a case going on right now about Twitter and a girl that was violated and exploited and blackmailed. And Twitter says, I, there's nothing here that violates our policy, but they will take down if you're trying to combat this, if they think for a second that you might in any way, shape or form be anything like QAnon, which we are not for what it's worth. We absolutely believe in using real numbers. So this is crazy business, but I want you to see that this is a serious business. You know, we have a lot of kids out there 
that need our support. Hats off to organizations like Sam Manuel Casino that take the time to support organizations like us and and uh, other companies that handle um, foster kids and like that. We desperately need it, especially in this crazy time of COVID where everything is shut down and we can't raise money by selling our books and doing all the things that we're doing. So we desperately need people to support our work. One of the things that I read to you, in fact, I have that article right here that sex trafficking has gone up enormously. I can't remember. Here it is right here. Pandemic exacerbates, I can't say the word, exacerbates (laughs) conditions contributing to trafficking. And they talk about how much it is up under COVID because you know, people who get obsessive compulsive and get into sex buying or they get into child pornography, they uh, get under pressure under COVID. In the meantime, you've got all these kids online and many of them are not getting supervision and they're younger and younger and younger. And so you're seeing organizations like me and kids just be absolutely slammed with work and not able to catch up. And that is because All of this is getting exaggerated. So I want to give a a shout out here to the FBI for actually taking the time to go out and find missing and runaway kids, especially in Los Angeles, where they've cut their budget severely. I mean, when you take over $100 million out of police budget, the last thing they're going to do is go out and track down a missing teenager. Okay, too bad you're not in the budget this year. Try again next year. And so, and that, and the danger here is when our kids run away, Marino Valley, Corona, Rupa, Hemet, you know, San Bernardino, Victorville, where do they go? They go to the big city to LA. And so they don't have that same funding now. And so we have to realize what all of this means to us. Having said that, if you're listening to this show, it's because you care and you want to be a leader and you want to help us. Okay. And you want to make a difference. The first thing to do is talk to your kids and your grandkids, you know, become a million kids insider, go to million kids insider alerts. If you would not mind at a print that, that by the way, is our effort to take our education in house in case we had shut off again on one of these sites. In the meantime, we are trying to rebuild Million Kids Facebook page. So it's IE, like in the Inland Empire, IE Million Kids. Just go to me, uh, to Facebook and, and like us if you would. I would sincerely appreciate it. We're actually a national country, company. I travel all over the United States, but they wouldn't let us set up Million Kids again. So that's what we did. So I'd appreciate it if you'd follow us. I really would. If you have it in your heart to support our work, I would greatly appreciate it. If you want to contact me, you can at opal, O-P-A-L at million kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, millionkids.org. And uh, I, I would appreciate it. And if any of you have it in your heart to help us financially, I can't tell you how much that means to us. You know, we are grassroots, baby. It's just a few of us. We never wanted to be a major corporation. We never intended to grow big and have full staffs. You know, all of us have other jobs that we do, or we uh, work with other corporations that help uh, support our work. And that's exactly how we all operate so that we can be bare bones, that we can be effective. Our biggest thing, and we've been doing it 12 years now, is every time we see a missing kid brought home and we've got tens of thousands of flyers out there, you can go on Facebook and and, uh, tell mom that you're praying for him, okay? So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you folks have a wonderful week. We're headed into a, a great and interesting time in our society. So put your arms around your family and let them know you love them and that you're proud of them. We'll see you next Saturday at 3 o'clock on AM 590. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than 6 billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. 
Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators.